Hello everyone and welcome to Ellen with a Y goes live Tuesdays at 10. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so excited to have you here. We have such a fun show and I am going to be joined by my guest, Emily Mannix, later on in the show. Thank you for coming, Emily. Woohoo! So we are going to dive right in because we have a packed show. First off, hot topics. The first in the news of hot topics, I was just made aware of this today, that Ariana Grande is suing. Oh my God, my phone's calling, there we go. Ariana Grande is suing Forever 21 for $10 million because they used her likeness in a campaign. Now, I have, I'm gonna show you the fo her photos. So these are the photos from her seven rings. Now this other photo is the photo from the Forever 20, one of the photos from the Forever 21 campaign. And literally the caption is, gee thanks, just bought it. Straight up from her seven rings song. So Ariana is literally suing that they're using her likeness and her creative IP. Well, okay, two things. Shocked in this day and age that anyone would use a celebrity's likeness without paying them. This has happened enough that you would think that somebody would look up and be like, did we get this like approved? Because everyone thought that the other person looked up and said, oh yeah, this is definitely signed off on, right? So that's kind of like this domino effect of like, how does stuff like this happen? I could see it. I could see it happening. Like everyone thinks that the other person like handled it and then, you know, your company's getting sued for $10 million. It sucks to work in Forever 21 right now. At least, you know what, honestly, it would have been really funny if she sued for 21 million just to stick it to them. <laughs> so that is the Ariana Grande news. On to our next hot topic is the very long social media post that Justin Bieber posted yesterday. Um, his caption was, hope you find time to read this. It's from my heart. It literally looks like a thousand word essay. It is so long. I, of course, found the time to read this. I actually thought it was insightful. You know, obviously he could have taken it to spell check or like maybe done a reread for grammatical issues, but like, you know what? Your heart's there. I think he is in a season of evolution and change. And I think anyone that's wanting to work on themselves should be celebrated and people that want to grow and evolve. And when you know better, you do better. And I think that that's great. It's a shame that we live in a culture that is you know, in media, you're trying to get clicks on your articles. I totally understand that. And that's why most of the, the news outlets today were like, oh, Justin Bieber, you know, long social media posts, admits to like excessive drug use because he did talk about his drug use. He also in this long post talked about how he was disrespectful to women, but like notice how that did not make the headline. I don't think that's clicky enough. Like shout out to Selena. Anyway. <laughs> I think it's cool that he's sharing this and like, you know, hopefully other people that are like questioning or deciding to maybe get help or try to like evolve or change their life or think that maybe their life is not fixable. You totally can. If Justin Bieber can do it, you can do it too. So that is the hot topic. I'm leaving it on a positive note. So that moves me into our big brother-in-law segment where I chat with my brother-in-law, Wayne Stankiewicz and we talk about the latest and greatest happening on Big Brother season 21. Hi Wayne. Hey, hello. How's it going? Good. So, shocked that Mickey is head of household for what, the third time? He was saying he didn't want to be head of household. Right, I think they're down to a spot where they don't have a lot of options, so they're gonna hurt somebody's feelings putting them up on the block, and he didn't want to have to be the first one to do that, uh, so I think that's why he was a little weary of being head of household. Yeah, so what's your take? What's going on in the house? So the behind the scenes stuff that's going on that they haven't shown us any of yet is related to the Zingbot Zings last week. I thought they were very hurtful. <laughs> Wait, wait, do it again, do it again. <laughs> I I thought that Zingbot was very hurtful. He was. There were some personal attacks, more so than, you know, funny comments on gameplay or, you know, things like that that we've seen in previous years. Yeah, I didn't like what he said to Nicole. No, I thought 
Mickey's zing was not That was mean. I, for Nicole, I thought it could have been about, like, her bird phobia. And then, like, for Mickey, they could have made fun of his, like, watermelon obsession. Like, there's other things that they could have poked fun at that would have been fun for everyone, I felt. Yeah, and I think the house guests felt that way, too, particularly Holly. Oh, really? So Holly has been shook by the zings because she is hyper aware of some of the things that America thinks about the players, particularly her and Nikki, as a result of what they were zinged on. There's not that much of an age difference between them, though. No, and I, uh, I read this explanation of why Holly was considered a buzzard, because buzzards are the ones that swoop in and clean up the scraps. So they were referring to Cat. Oh, they called her a buzzard? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even catch that. So they were referring to Cat and Nikki and then Holly coming in and cleaning up afterwards. Oh, that's such a bummer. Oh, you know what? I'm really disappointed with Big Brother this season. We don't get to see the, like the HOH when someone wins HOH. Like, yeah. you don't get to see like their pictures or their letters. I'm like, where's the like personal touch? Where's the thing that like makes you like these people? I think that's out for more gameplay. So back to Holly, because of all this stuff, she's uh, being hyper aware of how America perceives her and Mickey. And she's doing things in the house specifically in an attempt to get more airtime. So she made up this whole like dance routine with Mickey that they did on the live feeds because Holly thought it would be something that would make it to air so that she could get more airtime and be on TV more. <laughs> uh, and this obsession of hers to get more airtime and be perceived as more than Mickey's girlfriend in the house has driven a pretty big split in between them to the point where allegedly after the veto comp that we're going to see tomorrow they broke up no so i don't, I don't know where that leaves their alliance <gasps> so we'll see how that all plays out and oh my god don't they realize that the double eviction is coming don't they understand that they need to keep their alliances together yeah so that's why a lot of people are thinking mickey is going to be the one that gets the axe in the second eviction if she won and evicted him that would be like evil so okay we're going into we're gonna see veto tomorrow then we're going into eviction double eviction night which i cannot wait yeah. what do you think's gonna happen that's a good question i think it's gonna depend a lot on how tommy decides to play his game i was a, a big tommy fan he was a favorite to win for for the last few weeks but i think that's starting to, to crumble a little bit oh i watched his his family's live. I was watching his family's live stream on his Instagram and his dad said that he didn't think that Tommy has a good chance to win. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> well, the thing is, he is sending all these people to the jury house because of his blind loyalty to Christy. Yeah. And it's people like Nick that he's made alliances with that thought they could trust him. But then when they're put up against Christy, he doesn't really have a choice but to vote his allies out. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to a lot of people if he makes it to the final two they might not give him their vote i'm so curious to see how this plays out well Wayne, i it's gonna be we're gonna go on a hiatus for the show i haven't announced that yet but we are gonna go on a hiatus so a, a yatus <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to go on a hiatus until the 30th episode of Ellen with a Y goes live, which is on <laughs> Tuesday, September 24th, the day after my 30th birthday, and the day before the season finale of Big Brother. So there's going to be a lot for us to dig into on that Tuesday. Definitely. All right. I will talk to you later, Wayne. Bye. Bye. Shout out to my family who is... Uh, receiving this big brother information and it's scandalous oh, my, my aunt grace said we will miss you yeah just a small yeah so i guess i'm just announcing in the middle of the show we're gonna take a brief two-week hiatus i've never taken a break from the show since i started doing it 29 weeks ago this is the 29th episode we started back in february Every 10 episodes, we do a fun party, a fun celebration. I say thank you to all the guests who've been on before. Uh, so I have them over. We have a little bit of a party. So we're going to hold off on the 30th episode because I really want it to align with my 30th birthday. So after 29 weeks, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to rest. I'm going to see what I used to do on a Tuesday night. I'll probably fill it with some stand-up open mics and because that's kind of what I do now. If you're going to miss the show, thank you for saying that. You guys are being so sweet. That's so sweet of you to say. I was worried no one was going to care and then no one would watch again on the 30th episode. Um, but we're going to come back while rest 
tested and I'm really, really excited uh, to take on 30, 30th episode, 30th birthday, and the finale of Big Brother. We're gonna get into the food for thought segment of the show, which is going to be a quick, oh, Carolyn, she's so sweet, a quick rant on cruises. <laughs> so for anyone who like loves cruises, let me just explain, and it's funny because Emily, my guest, is actually a gold member of cruises. Not by choice. Not by choice. See, <laughs> she does, she's got gold member status and she doesn't even want it. So imagine being in a confined space, mm -hmm. not being able to escape, and something goes wrong. Like, oh, I don't know, like a crazy person, like pushes someone overboard. You get locked in the brig. What if you get falsely accused of pushing someone overboard and you get locked in the brig or locked in your room? You know they can do that, they can lock you in your room. Also, has anyone ever heard about all these sickness, all these sickness outbreaks on these cruises where they have all these stomach issues or like some other problem? Or did you see that one on the news where they hit high seas and people had chairs flying around the decks like they were on the Titanic sliding from side to side? Also, while we're talking about the Titanic, if you were in the third grade when the movie Titanic came out, maybe you also wouldn't like the idea of being stuck on a boat in the middle of the ocean, just waiting, waiting for absolution that would never come, okay? I literally, there's like, what about being confined to a boat with people you don't know, having to sit next to people you don't know, go in a pool with other people and their bodies and their juices and whatever they got going on, in the pool, sharing food from a communal source that could be tainted. You got pirates and stuff, you know, I'm the captain now. You have rebellions. You have people that go, what is it when they, when people, mutiny, that's a boat term. That's from ships, okay? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't feel like that sounds like a vacation I wanna pay for, okay? Also, there's like this weird fear I would have is if I docked and did an excursion that I wouldn't make it back in time to get on the boat and they would leave me. Mm -hmm. That's like a very real fear. And I know I would only be with people who like would be like, oh, wait, where's Ellen? But like, like it's not completely unreasonable to like forget someone or leave them behind. Home Alone and Home Alone 2 exist. If anybody watches Friends from College, poor Felix. Oh. <laughs> Inside joke for the people who watch Friends oh. from College. So... My dad goes, never been on one, but looking forward to one in May 2020. Have fun. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of cruises. And I don't like the idea that it's like its own independent island that's floating around and they have the right to do and say what they want because they have like martial law on the boat and i don't know if you look up some things you're gonna learn that it's not really great for employees who work on cruise ships it's not really great for the environment and it's not really good for you if anything bad happens because they don't follow like an american u.s like legal system the only kinds of cruises i'd be down for are viking river cruises <laughs> so that's how I feel about cruises. That's my thoughts on cruises. That's why I wasn't invited on the family cruise next year. And I'm okay with it. And you know what? You're better off for it. You don't need me on this cruise. Thanks. <laughs> so that's food for thought, which means we're bringing on the guest, my guest, Emily Mannix, gonna join me up here. Come on up. Woohoo! And I'm just gonna put my arm around you here, and if you drift out, then Ooh, I'll pull you in. Just pull me in. Okay. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I yeah. feel anchored to you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like on a cruise ship. Like, like on a cruise. Like if you had a life vest, I'd pull you in. Oh, they. I, we'll go to our muster station. I could go for days. I know all no, of the terms. I can't. I can't. Like literally, the fact that you have to know how to like survive on the water. Also, guys, how many movies do you have to watch where people are like stuck on the ocean? Mm. Come I on. Mean, not that many. There's there's enough. There's enough. I've been, oh, so I've been on like 10 cruises, but like starting younger and like, again, not by choice. My parents are big cruisers. Big they're, cruisers. they're diamond status and I'm gold by like association. association. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello everyone. This is Emily Mannix. Hello. She is the director of talent casting and partnerships at Refinery29. Oh, I keep, I keep like. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> and a certified yogi. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. So I taught. I start every interview off with, so Emily, how do we know each other? 
we work together at Refinery29. There you go. Like most of the guests on the show, <laughs> it really is like the most diverse, interesting group of people. Like I'm so grateful to work there. Such interesting people at Refinery. I love oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. We got the good one. <laughs> so I wanted to actually start off first as I know you're from Oregon. Yes. And just quickly, I'm curious. When yeah. people say Oregon, how does that make you feel? It hurts deep <laughs> inside. Or I'll be like, I don't know where that is. I don't, not from there. No. <laughs> and then people fight me. They will always fight me. They'll be like, no, I'm pretty sure it's Oregon. And I'm oh like, oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure I was born there and lived there for 22 years of my life. But yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not. And they'll be like, but we learned that in school. And I was like, nope. Oregon Trail. You're like, no. I don't wrong. know what that is. That is not what it is. Wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> okay. So if you guys take a look or a gander at Emily's um, Instagram, which is skinnym21. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just making you public to the world. Oh, thank you. If you take a look, there's quite a few uh, famous faces. Oh, yeah. On your Instagram. Yes. And being that you are involved in talent and partnerships and casting, I wanted to ask you, how did you get into that world? So... And what does that entail? Yeah. (laughs) It's interesting because I was in PR for five and a half years, and my foray into talent was actually via um, influencers, pretty much, and the... uh, the start of influencers was actually mom bloggers, which I had Wait, to... that's what I did in my yeah. first job. I had, had to reach out to mom, mom bloggers, bloggers for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying. Oh my God. Yeah. It was... I had an angry... I tried to find it recently. I had an, uh, a mom blogger wrote like an angry article about... Oh my God. Because we weren't paying them at the time. No. We were like... Exchange. Yes. Yep. And, a one, and there had been apparently some mom mm-hmm. blogger conference that happened. And then we went out to them for this thing with no... With just for exchange... This was, I mean, this was like eight years ago. This was in the beginning, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I was like, I'm never going to work again. This um, woman wrote a blog post and it mentioned our company and it said, Emily from this company. So literally, if you Googled, you would have found me. Oh it my was God. terrifying. The internet was very, very But I Googled scary. and I can't find the article anymore, oh, okay, so good. it's fine. Okay. Um, but I was doing, I was a low-level PR person, so I was doing all of the blogger outreach, which was mom bloggers mm-hmm. at the time. And doing mom blogger events, Twitter parties, which was a thing to get a hashtag trending. That was the big thing. And then I was, uh, we were the social media agency of record for Amtrak. And I took 30 people on a 35 hour train ride from LA to Austin for South by Southwest. Wow. My cousin would love that. He's a big Amtrak fan. Oh yeah. And so, um, that was like the first influencer, like I think where we called it influencers. Interesting. Um, That was like, that was a while ago. Um, and then, yeah, from there, I kind of, I forgot that I did like something with Campbell's Soup Company and the female CEO and like making a group of advisors of up and coming young women. And yeah. then I moved to a different agency to focus on influencer. And then I moved to R29 to focus on influencer more. And now I do um, a lot of the casting for our custom features, like our custom videos and photos. And so when you're, when you're casting, it's like very, it's very interesting because it's not like this historical industry. Like it did just mm. kind of pop up and the Mm -hmm. rules for influencers change a lot so you know if you're on Instagram and you see it has like a partnership hand like we call a handshake Mm -hmm. um that there's a lot of disclosures they have to say at like that Mm -hmm. all kind of came up yeah in the last couple of years it's like and it's still kind of the wild west yeah like you used to just like we used to just give and I worked for a lot of alcohol brands and we would like give alcohol like mailers to people and like you would know you I think we we didn't even be like we have to verify they're 21 (laughs) and whatever and then we would like follow up and like really push them to post like we would send opening ceremony gift cards and like send these like hundreds of like each mailer probably cost a couple hundred dollars when we could have just paid them a couple hundred dollars Mm -hmm. to post but it was all like a thematic the money and, that we like spent on sending them things. Yes. Yeah, I remember. It was that. a big deal. Yeah. The mailers, such a big deal. <laughs> and now it's like, no, you just pay for it. Now it's just. But like, it, yeah, but it's all. I mean, I feel like I've been there for from the beginning because it's all kind of went back to the mom bloggers. Yeah, stuff. and so what people wouldn't realize is that there's like rate cards and you have to pay fair like fair rates to based on like followers or I don't know if people are starting to get more into like engagement and yeah, it's it's. It's a lot more, what I find is so interesting is that if you're not working in this space, yeah. you don't really know how much goes into, like, 
this one influencer that's posting on behalf of the brand, that brand yeah. probably saw like what, 10 different influencers to pick from them. Yeah. And then you negotiate, like there's a lot that goes into it. I always remember, and it's kind of the same thing. There was this, I think it was like a Buzzfeed article years ago and it was like about a tweet made by like a bread company or something. It was like not a big deal. And it was like, this took like six weeks, the tweet that took six weeks to write or whatever. And it was yeah. about the copy and it was about the image. And like, was this the right image? And it's kind of the exact same thing goes into a sponsored post. You're paying for anything that you're seeing, um, getting people product, product selections, all kinds of stuff. You pay, like- There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of execution. And a lot it. that your team's responsible for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Kelsey and Justine and Lilac Woo-hoo! and Gabby. Gabby and Amber. Yes, we love the talent team. And Natasha, who's on maternity leave. Yes, we love the talent team at Refinery. You guys have been kind enough to kick me a post or two. I'm starting to get my game up. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, (laughs) But so now you've, you've had such an interesting career, right? And you have... It's kind of hectic in this space, I think, with like celebrity and talent and booking Mm -hmm. and arranging. Mm. You have this like other side that is a yogi. Yeah. You're a certified yoga instructor. Yes. I have my 200 hours. How, when did you do that? Mm -hmm. Do you still, are you still teaching? Mm -hmm. Do you want to teach a class here? (laughs) So I did it, um, I think it's been four years now. And it took place, I think it took, it was about a four month long uh, program because it was Friday nights and then like almost a day Saturday and Sunday. And you actually literally have to, the teachers running the program have to log like and show um, how you're hitting that 200 hours. Wow. Um, so it's a bunch of like reading and assignments and, uh, teaching classes and like making up classes. And there's like a lot of, uh, uh, background, like, mm. um, like, uh, Vedic texts study, uh, so much anatomy that you wow. haven't even, um, so I'm not teaching right now because I don't really have time. You don't have time. I was going to say you're busy. And my insurance has currently lapsed, but that's an easy fix. I can go online and get my, re-up my insurance really quickly. Oh, as a teacher. Insurance. Yeah. You oh, have okay. to have insurance yeah, yeah, because yeah. what if like someone pulls a hammy, like literally you're in trouble. Yeah. Um, but my insurance was really cheap because of my hour. It's based on like how many classes and hours of teaching you oh, do a week okay. essentially. Yeah. Um, so I'm not teaching right now, but I have taught at refinery. Um, I did, a, I did it? a pop in Lara bar. Oh, look I at you go. Class. You taught a class. Yeah, you know, so. That's awesome. And you feel like it really helps kind of bring like peace and, and clarity. ground me. I love it. Well, we're going to play a little game. I'm I ready. like to play games with everyone that comes on the show. So we're going to play. Would you rather? Oh, I have opinions. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. So would you rather go to sleep mm-hmm. knowing that there's a cockroach in your apartment <sighs> or a mouse? Um, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're going to have nightmares tonight. I actually had a cockroach situation and I couldn't kill it. It was like stuck in my, like the heating area and it wouldn't come out. And it was like two in the morning and I was like, I can't deal with this. <gasps> um, I think, God, it's so hard. I feel like a cockroach. You'd rather sleep with a cockroach? Well, it's not, <laughs> you're not sleeping. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sleeping with it. I feel like they're because it's probably it's easier to kill once you find it. Like, I don't know if I could like kill them at once. I find like because yeah. I'm thinking that I'm gonna be able to kill it at some point and I yeah. can probably kill a cockroach. I've killed cockroaches and I've never had to kill a mouse. Also, if you have a mouse, you might have an infestation, which means there's probably more of them versus sometimes I like to think that you could have like a singular in my mind. Yes, I know you can have a singular. We've had a cockroach. Since we had a cockroach once, and I, I just can't handle it. Like, mm. I don't handle it well at all. I think mice are hard to get rid of. They can, like, burrow and stuff. And you got their droppings and poop and stuff. Yeah. Like, no, there's, like, there's a very real component to, like, a mouse being, like, really wor- worse. But there's just something to it that's, like, oh, Cinderella-y of me. And I'm just like, it's not that bad. They're, like, a creature. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, a cockroach, I think, was sent from hell. Like, I think it's, like, a terrible... Yeah. I see cockroaches on the street, and I will, like, oh, scream no. on the ground. Yeah, I see, like, well, rats on the street, and I'll scream. That's a terrible question. There's I know. no right I'm answer. So There's sorry. no right answer. I thought it. That's when I started laughing. I was like, this is terrible. Yeah, you're a horse. <laughs> What's going on in your brain? That's great. Um, okay, so the next would you rather is... Yeah. Would you rather have to walk around naked for the day, doing mm-hmm. all your normal stuff, mm-hmm. or sleep an entire year away? Well, am I going to feel, like, refreshed? I mean, also, like, I have no problems being naked, but I have, like, I don't want to get burned. Yeah. And that's a very real problem for me in the summer <laughs> in New York City. 
Um, no, I just do the naked. I don't care. I know. I don't think I'd want to miss a year. A of, year, like, like people's <laughs> lives, like yeah. family. That's very I rip and wrinkly, with, but yeah, no. I think I'd also go like yeah. naked. Whatever, like it's 2019. It's, it's, it's fine. also. I'm pretty sure it's like it's legal to be topless in New York City. So is it? Yeah, <laughs> you could turn it into like a movement very easily, and it's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, you totally Just make, could. We can make it'll it a be, PR set. It'll, exactly. Fine. It'll be trending on Twitter Easy. by the end of the day. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. Oh my gosh. Well, that brings me into the final segment of the show, mm. which is our Noah Centineo. <laughs> Noah Centineo news update. Oh my god! I know you've heard me talk about him around oh, the yeah. office. Yeah, <laughs> that's ever. I think everyone has heard me talk yeah. about him. Oh my. Well, okay. He posted a new photo this weekend, <laughs> and I think it was a Labor Day gift to us all. And I'm just going to pull up. Okay. So there's this photo where this woman's hand <gasps> oh, is putting shit. a rose into his mouth, and I commented, uh, "Who is she?" <laughs> On the post, because I was like, this will be really funny, because people will see, because you know how you can see other people's comments? Yeah. You can see other people's comments on wow. Instagram, and I go, oh, this will be really funny. I'll comment, who is she? And, like, everyone that knows me will think this is funny. Mm. But the funny thing is, is that nobody liked my comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just a creep. No, you're just a creep. <laughs> who is she? I need to know. Is I going to think he's like, this is a girl who thinks that she's having a relationship with me in her head? I, I feel like, like the emoji at the end, like you needed like a, a like I need a like cuter, a way, yeah, yeah. You like you went crying. You went a little too serious. You were too real. <laughs> like it was too, too real, real. <laughs> and it was a little too fatal attraction. <laughs> Oh my god, I literally was like, this is so clever. <laughs> Don't you hate nothing. that though? Like, because you know your comment comes up and you're like, yeah. yeah, this is funny. Or like when you leave a comment on an account that like, you realize you realize later that like you're like you don't know if your friends know that, know you, that you, yeah. you follow them and then you're like just kind of outed myself yeah here. that's my Noah Centineo news update he posted a photo with someone putting a rose a woman putting a rose into his mouth he's gonna get in trouble he's like his, his yeah. publicist texted him and was like mm -mm. no thank you mm -mm. sir yeah so again just a reminder 30th episode is gonna be on Tuesday September 24th when it coincides with my 30th birthday, which was the day before on September 23rd. Which I told you is my best friend's birthday. That's why we get along. It's a great, it's a, it's a, it's a good birthday. It's a good birthday. It's a cusper birthday. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in the 30th episode. Yeah. So thank you everyone for watching. Please enjoy the hiatus as much as I'm going to. I hope that you definitely come back for the 30th episode and that this doesn't ruin my show and the algorithm. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. You're just like, you're just, t you're like, the, it, it, it's a it, test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll people will happens. come back and want more. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. So thank you all for watching. Thank you, Emily, for joining me this week. I appreciate it. I hope this show brought you guys some laughter and some joy. That's the point of the show. And I hope that you spread some laughter and joy because we could all use a lot more of it. So thank you very much. And we will see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. To subscribe to my channel, click here, and to watch more videos, click here. Be sure to like, comment, and hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video.